All right, in this video, we're going to do an example of basically finding the, the values for the other trig functions. If we're given a, a right triangle and if we know one of the trig functions, the value of one of the trig functions already. So, so here we're going to find, uh, we've got a right triangle with angle theta. Theta is going to be an acute angle. We know that cosine of theta is 5 over 12. So we simply want to find the values of the other trig functions. So here's going to be theta, so let's see. Sine of theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, the length of the opposite over the length of the hypotenuse. Cosine of theta, that's the uh, adjacent length over the length of the hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is defined to be the opposite length over the adjacent length. Okay, so they, they give us that cosine of theta is 5 over 12. So I'm simply going to label the adjacent side with length 5 and the hypotenuse with length 12. One thing that's important, there's no guaranteeing that you know, sort of the original triangle this came from actually had an adjacent uh, side of length 5 and a hypotenuse of length 12. You know, this could have been length 10 instead of 5, and this could have been length 24 instead of 12. I'm just doubling them. The idea is, though, Cosine of theta would be 10 over 24, which still would reduce to 5 over 12. So the proportions would still be the same. So it's really kind of irrelevant. Uh, the, the ratios will all work out to be the same in any case. So we can simply assume that the hypotenuse is 12 and the adjacent is 5. Um, now we can figure out the missing side using Pythagorean theorem. So we could say 5 squared plus this missing side, let's call it b squared, that's going to equal 12 squared. Well, let's see, uh, 5 squared is 25, plus b squared, that equals 12 squared, which is 144. If we subtract 25 from both sides, well, if you subtract 25, I believe we're going to get 119. And if you take the square root of both sides, we'll simply get that b equals the square root of 119. So a lot of times if these simplify, uh, they'll want you to sort of uh, try to reduce the radical. And 119 actually does factor. Uh, I believe that's going to be, um, let's see, how about 17 times 7? That's going to work. 7 times 10 is 70. 7 times 7 is 49. 70 plus 49 would give us 119. But you can't really factor these any further uh, using nice whole numbers. We can't take the square root of either of these. So this really doesn't clean up very much. So I'm just going to leave that b um, is equal to the square root of 119. All right, well, now we've pretty much got everything we need. We can start labeling everything. So again, we knew that cosine, that was given to us at the beginning. That was a, the adjacent length over the hypotenuse length, which would be 5 over 12. Well, to get sine of theta, okay, so that would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Well, that's just going to be the square root of 119 over 12. Tangent is defined to be the opposite length over the adjacent length, so that's just going to be the square root of 119 over 5. So, okay, we've already got three of them now. And remember, to get uh, if we know sine of theta, cosecant of theta is just defined to be the flip of sine. It's hypotenuse over opposite. So all we have to do is just flip-flop. our ratio that we had for sine theta. So sine square root of 119 over 12, that means cosecant of theta is going to be 12 over the square root of 119. Um, let's see, cosine of theta is 12, excuse me, 5 over 12. So that means secant of theta, which is 1 over cosine, or equivalently the hypotenuse over the adjacent. We'll just flip that fraction as well. That'll give us our value for secant of theta. And likewise, cotangent of theta, all we have to do is just take our fraction that we have for tangent of theta and flip that over. Okay, and to me, you now have all of the, uh, the ratios of the sides of the triangle. Um, you know, one little remark, maybe we'll pick on cosecant of theta here. So cosecant of theta is 12 over the square root of 119. 
Um, some people don't like to see roots in the bottom of a fraction in the denominator, so we could always rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 119. Well, that means in the numerator, we'll just simply get 12 times the square root of 119. And the denominator will have the square root of 119 times the square root of 119, which is going to give us 119. Um, and now, again, we could try to reduce. But remember, we said factors of 119 uh, were basically 17 and 7. Uh, 12, if you factor that, that doesn't have any factors of 7 or 17. So 12 over 119 uh, won't reduce. So we could simply say that cosecant of theta, you could rewrite it equivalently like this. Uh, the same way we could do cotangent of theta. After you rationalize the denominator, you would get 5 times the square root of 119 over 119. And again, that doesn't really reduce at all. But again, you know, uh, there's no guaranteeing that these original links were 5 and 12. But the idea is it doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as they're in that same proportion, um, all of these, uh, these equivalent ratios uh, will work out to be the exact same value.